Right, hey Rod, Clue. Feels good to, to be getting back into the Melody deck teching. So basically all I've been doing is I played games against Practice Dummy on Teleshare. And the simplest reason for that is, again, I'm not really making a competitive deck, I'm also making a combo deck. So all I'm trying to test is how quickly I can get the combo off, how consistently I can get the combo off. And therefore the easiest thing to do is just play against the Practice Dummy, see if I can get off, you know, turn two or three. And I've actually been getting it fairly consistently with the, the new deck style I'm running. So thanks to some back and forth between me and uh, Fish and Blood Gaming, we've figured out a few more consistent things for the deck. So little gimmicks, if you will, so like Belittle, allowing you to search out a, a blue pitch ball or using Weight Gold to turn Encore into finding a blue pitch ball to actually make getting the combo off a bit more consistent. Also, as you can see, made some other tweaks. I thought, given the, the level of consistency that I've been able to achieve in the last few games I've been testing it, why don't we just give, give it a go, right? We'll actually redo this turn, because I think this is a fairly decent turn to show off the different styles. I don't know if I can go to the start of the turn. Can I? Yeah, perfect. Okay. So they're using Tusk. It's fine. Again, the my concept for this deck is, obviously, you just sink damage, and you try and get the combo off by turn two, turn three. So we'll take the two, it's not a big deal. And as you I'm also running Hope Merchant's Hood instead of the Crown. And to go with that, I'm running Stein Stake. I haven't been able to get Stein Stake, but my my goal, if you will, is to have more, more things to do in the starting turn. So for instance, dropping potions, dropping talismans, using starting stake to generate the gold that are non-responsive from your opponents, right? So it, in general, you want to go first, and then you give your opponent no advantage whatsoever if you're just, again, playing talismans, playing potions, or using Psyche Stake, which I think is definitely a, a good game plan. Also, sorry, I forgot to mention, still working on, on the setup. Uh, this room has a ceiling fan. It's also horribly, horribly ventilated. It is extremely hot, even with high roofs. Um, with the fan, right, it's ceiling, so if you can hear it, well, I'll know when I edit this, but yeah. Apologies if it is in the video. I'm still, yeah, working stuff out. Anyway, let's see if I can pull this off again. I don't quite remember the sequencing. I think I started with Art of War, or I might have started with the cash in. And we'll go Art of War. Pop the Talisman. That allows us to draw two and gain the go again for our future final act. All right, and then we can just sync Wage Gold. Our two cards are final act and potion of light. So this is the other big tweak. So both Hope Merchant's Hood and Potion of Luck, although they reset the deck in essence, right? So you shuffle everything in the deck. It is still a huge potential to search out, say, Cash Out. Cash Out is still the big crux of the deck, even with the amount of gold that we have access to now. Well, you have to get lucky. You have to, you know, land a performance bonus and wage gold. But even with that amount of extra gold, I, I still, you need Cash Out, right? So... Potion of Luck and Hope Merchant's Hood. Hope Merchant's Hood is a lot better than Potion of Luck. Uh, just a great way to try and consistently get um, cash out. Okay, so then we'll probably, we can't play the other Art of War. So now we'll probably play the cash in since we're floating, right? And just burn the Potion of Luck. So don't pay the silver. Use the Potion of Luck. That gets us an eye and another wage gold. So from here, we can use the Art of War. So draw two and buff this time. I'll get rid of the other Wage Gold. Right, Nick Nack, Brick Brack, and Wage Gold. Uh, I think that was a slight error in what I, I've done previously, but we can easily make up for it. So now we can start burning through silver. So I have a video. So I'm pretty sure on on the previous, you know, when we started the video, I popped the eye and I'd sunk both Nick Nack, Brick Brack, and the yellow Wage Gold, right, because they're not super helpful. But we'll see if we can still get it off. So Wage Gold we still want because it's a blue, so it definitely stays at the top. Belittle can go to the bottom. And we'll get our blue. Perfect, so we can continue to pop through the silver. Build up our pitch, another Time Stamp Potion, get rid of that too. Time Stamp Potion is also really good with Starting Stake or, you know, Tomes. So that is why they're in the deck. Uh, we could play Belittle, right? Use it to find out a Minimalism. The problem is it will eat our Art of War proc. So we'll just burn the silver, and then we'll probably just burn the Hope Merchant's Hood on the on the whatever dead cards we have. Yeah, so Golgarian Tome into Starting Stake. So we can actually do Time Stamp Potion, right? Get our extra action points, use Starting Stake. Now we get the gold back, and off that I can burn the Wage Gold. 
and from that we get another belittle. Okay, so we've in essence bricked. So we can use Hope Merchant Sword to get rid of Knickknack Brick Brack and Belittle, and we just want Encore or another final act. We got Sign Stake and Belittle. That's not fantastic, but it's still you know a fairly decent final act, right? I think opting and searching is probably the, the better call that I missed out on. Still for 18. Yeah, so somehow I got two, and I do think it was from seeking sinking the, the two cards of the Ivor Fidia. I mean we'll we'll do it one more time. See if I can do it a little bit better. It's our previous turn. So uh, we'll still go the same. We'll do use cash in. So the big thing to really learn with this deck is the correct sequencing. Like what cards have priority over one another because they are either they allow you to float resources, they allow you to go positive in hand, or you just need to, f you can use them freely without having to look for something. So for instance, Art of War, we need an attack action. Term of, of Ferrandel, we need either Mage Master Boots or something to generate an action point. Cash in, we need either the four or two silver slash one gold. So thinking about all that and how they mesh together. Even right now, I could play the Talisman and hope to find another cash out. That could also be, you know, a plausible scenario in our head. Or we could even just hope Merchant sort off the bat, get rid of the dead cards like Talisman and Wage Gold. There's just, yeah, a lot of different routes you can take every time you have a hand, to, and it's about figuring out what the highest consistency of drawing through decks make cards as possible, and obviously finding the combo pieces. So this time around, we will we'll still start with Art of War, right? Burn it from the arsenal, I think. Pitch the Talisman of Cremation. Draw two, buff. Sorry, not buff. Go again, because we always want to look for the double. Final Axe, get rid of Wage Gold. Right, that gets us the Potion of Luck and the Final Act. We don't need to use Potion of Luck, so, and we can't use Art of War. So again, we have to use Cash In, but actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna burn the Silver, I think, first. I know it's in there somewhere, I just can't remember how I got to it. So I think in this scenario, the, the priority is to burn through the Art of War as soon as you get in tag action, burn through the Silver, and then Cash In is your last resort, maybe? Well, it depends on the resource, because again, it's quite costly. Maybe once you get down to two silver and you have that flexibility of either using the silver to pay for it or burning cards in hand, that's when you decide to use cash in. But we'll burn Art of War. So banish two and buff this time. Get rid of the blue wage gold. Well, I do know, having done this over and over, that we draw into a yellow, so maybe it was worth waiting. But now with new cash in, uh, we don't want to pay for silver. And then we can use the eye. So we know we get... Wage gold blue and knickknack. So knickknack, go to the bottom. Still want the blue, right? Or do I want to sink it? I think I'm one card short again because I do distinctly remember getting rid of both the yellow wage gold and knickknack with I. So I am off slightly with the, the previous sequence, but it's fine. So silver, off of blue. We are floating resources. No, we're not floating resources. It's fine though. It's in there somewhere. I'm sure we'll get to it. So I could also belittle into minimalism. Just double the little, right? We do lose a lot of damage if we're not finding the other final act. So we'll save it for now. Us. Get the tome. So we're at the exact same step as before. So then starting stake, so we do time snap potion. We could even do the Mage Master Boots. Load a resource. It's also something worth considering. We get the gold. We can burn the little. It doesn't really matter at this point. And we get the blue, so then we cycle again. And now we get so. So it's definitely a different sequence. The Hope Merchant Hood, I would assume, is completely random every single time. This is definitely a much better sequence. If only we could play the cash in. I could try and look for the other final act. I mean, we've drawn through a huge amount of our deck. See, it's, it's still obviously inconsistent because we are looking for one, well, two specific cards, either Encore to pull back the final act or the other final act. So the fact that we can get a consistent draw sequence like this is quite nice, but it is still a little ways from being, you know, consistent, something like um, Kano. So at this point, you know, we'll just see what the draw is anyway, and we'll probably just start from scratch and I'll go over the deck. Yeah, so we weren't going to find the other final act. That's fine. We'll make a new game and explain the deck a little bit. Okay, so starting off, 
weapon is same as usual, Arcane Lantern or Talshare. I really wish there was another one-handed. It'd be great to just run two, two weapons, right? Uh, like a one-handed sword and the Arcane Lantern, it's fine, or even Arcane Lantern Shield if they weren't you know, specific. Uh, head slot, this is a big one, so Hope Merchant's Hood, Balance of Justice, or Crowded Minion. Balance of Justice is pretty terrific, right? You can get the block off it and draw effect or cash it out, so that flexibility is really, really good for a competitive sense. Hope Merchant's Hood, if you're going for something combo -y like what I'm doing, Hope Merchant's Hood, I do think is actually the unsung hero. So the fact that you can shuffle any number of cards from your hand into your deck and draw that many, right? That is pretty good. Now, obviously, you probably want to use that at the start of a sequence before you start drawing through your deck. Well, it doesn't really matter. We don't run that much opt, so reshuffling the deck isn't a big deal. We're doing it turn two or turn three, hopefully. So also pitch stacking or recycling the pitch into the deck isn't a big deal either. So yeah, overall, I just, I think the flexibility sink your hand, especially with the fact that you can use um, starting stake now to replace Crown and Dominion is decent enough. You do lose out on the silver, so that is slightly worse, but I think just increasing the consistency of finding cash out or finding any of the combo pieces through this is, is substantial enough. Uh, Farindale Spring Tunic or Deep Blue, Deep Blue just to cycle red or yellow card. Farindale Spring Tunic obviously is, is significantly better if you can get to turn three with it. Otherwise, you still just sync it with cash out. Deep Blue, you wouldn't have the option. Frontline Gauntlets, this is definitely the competitive pick just to try and withstand that one extra turn. Use it if you're going second or even, you know, on your first turn when your opponent's trying to dish out damage to survive just that little bit. I mean, it, it gets a lot worse if you're not going, if you're going first, right? Because if you go first, then it gets a minus one on your opponent's first turn. So it, it's decent, but you could probably still run just Gambler's Glove or just the Null Rune. And then Mage Master Boots still as the joining card for a lot of our other ones. Stein Stake, now it works with. Uh, it also works with Tome of Ferrandale. I don't think there's anything else. No. Actually, the potions, it does work with the potions, right? If you have a lot in hand and you want to stack them out, you could burn the Mage Master Boots just to get them on field. So the big thing that we're trying to get is we want our opening hand to have amulets, talismans, or starting stake. That way we can, you know, generate a field presence that we can utilize for our, our future turns. So Knickknack Brick Rack allows us to do just that. Doesn't have to go again, but it's a pay three and we get to search one of these items out. So that's decent enough, thins out the deck. Then we have the different amulets, element, uh, Amulet of Intervention and Cre Talisman of Cremation. Both, we never worry about their effects. I just picked two that would never trigger. Potion of Luck is like Hope Merchant's Hood. It's a little worse because you have to shuffle all your hand and arsenal into the deck. I mean, you don't get the option to use it if you have any of the combo pieces, but you could at that point then cash it out, right? If it's on field. So I think that flexibility is nice enough. Time Snap Potion, I don't know how I feel about it. This or energy Potion, but sometimes I feel like we don't need the energy and sometimes I feel like we don't need the action points. So maybe 1-1 one, one would be the better flexible option. And we're only running one on call. I might bump that back up to two just to increase the consistency of trying to get Final Act off. Otherwise, it's fairly fairly similar to what we've been running previously, right? Cash in, cash out, Tome, Art of War, Gorgarian Tome, all of our draw engines. Uh, and then Belittle and Minoism is the big one. Fish and Blood point out. So you can use Belittle to search out Minoism, which is fantastic because it allows you to float resources most likely off of it. And then also put another blue or yellow into your hand, which is fantastic. Performance bonus. And then we also have Wage Gold. So Wage Gold, blue or even yellow. If we get it into our graveyard, Encore now becomes a, you know, pay one, maybe float resources, search out a blue or yellow. So similar to Belittle, which is good in its own aspects. I have a video just because of the opt and it's blue. I feel like running more opt, but then also that goes against Hope Merchant Hood and the Potion of Luck. But we'll see if we can we can get the combo off again. Because I have been having decent luck with it. And there you go, that's a nice enough hand to start off. So burn the tome, and then burn Sighting Stake. We can even burn the Minimalism just to get out of hand. Or even burn Lead the Charge. I I probably want to burn both, right? Just to thin out the deck. Yeah, I think that's that's the right thing to do. So burn that, burn minerals, and we're not going to play Belittle because we don't want our opponent to have anything to react against. And we'll just play Sack Stake to get the gold out. And we're not even going to Arsenal the Belittle, right? Because we don't want to. So we got Wage Gold, Belittle, and Time Snap Potion. So unfortunately, this is a pretty bad hand. But at this point, we could hope Merchant's Hood to try and go for it here on turn two. 
which we'll, we'll give a go. Otherwise, we could try and just put the time stamp potion out and survive one more turn, even play a little off, say, the wage gold to try and pull the minimalism thing out our deck a little bit more. Again, surviving to turn two or three seems to be what we're able to do in most circumstances. Obviously, the, so the big issue with me is Melody in Blitz is just heavily underpowered. Right? If you go with a wide deck or even a big deck, you know, focusing on Wage Gold Pummel or, or Razor Reflex and all the small attacks that you can chain together, the issue is your average damage is still significantly lower than every other hero in Blitz. Right? There's just not enough feeding into your your hero to do anything. Right? I still think the 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 songs were the big issue. Even if they were just they affected you as well, right? They buffed you, you got the copper. I think that still would have been decent enough balancing rather than just making them all uh, PV or party orientated. But yeah, so we'll probably just... What do I want to do? I think a little into, into Minimalism, into the Time Snap Potion. It's probably the right call. So we will burn the yellow one. We will pitch the Wage Gold. We will reveal the other Belittle. And then we'll be able to search out the other blue Minimalism, which just sets us up with a nice blue stacked hand. And then we can just play the Time Snap Potion. We can save the Hope Motion Sword if we brick or anything like that. But then we will not Arsenal anything again. Yeah, unfortunate. It's a little sad that we don't have anything decent to Arsenal. Hopefully we can get the combo going now. Because at this point, if this was a normal Blitz match, this would be where we, we run out of, of life. But now we have the Tunic up and we have Hope Motion Sword still. So what exactly do we want to do? How do we start this off? Well, we burn the Tunic. Burn the gold. And just hope we get something to go into draw. We got an amulet, so that's not fantastic. So we probably want to hope Merchant's Hood. And I'm going to get rid of all the cards, but Encore. Oh. I don't think one extra card would have really mattered there. Well, different cycle, so that was that was definitely a high roll, but that would have been the end of our, our turn if I didn't undo yeah don't abuse that right don't just throw it into a, yet a good hand <laughs> okay so off of this fortunately we don't have a, an attack for art of war so we're probably dead as well right we just have to arsenal the, the final act and hope that we get something on the next turn which is a bit unfortunate right we're one attack off could also just sink the final act right and look for the other one it's probably what we'd have to end up doing if we were in a proper match right just to try and go for it yeah, so we're not finding anything, fortunately. So that would have been that done. Let's let's pull up another. I don't think I can restart against the boss. Right, if I concede and we go with a full rematch, or even a quick rematch, right, it doesn't quite work. Yeah, okay, I'll make another game. Okay, let's see if I get a little better luck this time around. So we can start with saying safe, we can arsenal the other four. No have any cards to burn, so it's fine. Just get our gold. Arsenal our card, and hopefully draw into... Nope. Nothing quite yet. So I'd probably go one more turn before we try to go for it. Just play the Talisman. And probably just burn the Minoism. And then turn three is where we try and pop off. And you'd probably just use those cards to block your opponent's first turn in that scenario. Wouldn't worry about playing it. The one extra silver of the talisman isn't huge. Yeah, it helps, but it's not it's not huge. Okay, so let's see what type of luck we get now. So we can burn the tunic. Yeah, one, play Art of War, banish and go again. Getting rid of the little. Actually, performance bonus is probably the better one to get rid of at this point. So we did get cash out, which is fantastic, right? Salvaged. Very, very low chance. It was uh what was it? Two in 32, but we got it, so can't complain. Cash out. If you want to get rid of the tunic. Gauntlets. We have lead the charge, so I'm probably going to get rid of the Mage Master Boots as well. Just for the extra silver. Fellowship and Talisman of Cremation. I will still keep the Hope Merchant Sword again, just for that flexibility if we do end up bricking as a last ditch effort to, to find something. And then we probably just want to start with the gold so we float resources. Minimalism. Another blue. And now it's all just up to luck. Come on. Got half the pieces. Knickknack Brickerback is a pretty bad one. It's 
points. One other draw engine. Nope. That's the other nice thing about potions. They are blue, so they slot into burning. All right. I is actually not that good, right? Because we're going to hope merchant's hood. Uh, we have lead the charge. And I yet to two. No, I, I don't need to because I have lead the charge. So we want to keep it so. But we want to bottle the little. Now we can lead the charge. Lead tome for neutral draw. There's the other tome, but not quite what we need. So we need to hope Merchant's Hood. And we're just hoping for an encore. Sorry, not an encore, final act. Yeah, so that was perfect, right? So that was hope Merchant's Hood coming in pretty clutch. Uh, we can play Minimalism as well, just to buff. Can we? No, because we need the three, right? Yeah, because we're using Encore. So we play Final Acts. We want to pitch Knickknack Brick a Brick first. 15, not bad. Then the second one will be 17. Pitch Minimalism. Play Final Acts. Yeah. So not awful, right? I do, I do feel we're getting more consistent every single day. Just having the different cards feed into one another, different ways to, to search out cards of the deck and thin it out. I think it's, I think we're getting there, right? One day it will be a perfect combo deck. And then also today we'll have proper support and proper cards to play. I, I still think both the wide option and the big options we were trying with before are, are very decent, right? They have viable options in certain matchups. Brutes, you're probably just going to get beat down pretty heavily. Uh, what else? What else just dishes out insane damage right from the get go? It's pretty much Brood and Guardian at this point, right? If everyone else, you might be able to survive a few turns, and taking that route is is probably more consistent in the long run because you have other stuff to do, right? I still love the fact that you have other stuff to do, but my play style is, is simply this combo, right? I like comboing out. Anyway. We'll leave it there. Hope you enjoyed. See ya.